Today's lesson is about wireless standards. Wireless standards is basically the various types of wireless frequencies you actually get out there. There are plenty of frequencies and not all of them were released at the same time, nor are they all used for the same purposes or even in the same manner. One thing they all have in common though is the fact that they are all wireless, obviously, that and the fact that they all normally tend to start with 802.11. You'll notice that whenever we talk about a wireless frequency, it tends to start with the numbers 802.11. And then obviously something after that dot 11, which is normally going to be a letter of some kind. Whatever comes after the dot 11 normally tells us which frequency we're dealing with. And that will normally be indicated with a letter or two letters of some kind. So in a nutshell, Wireless standards are a set of services and protocols that dictate how your Wi-Fi network and other wireless networks actually act. All right, so to get you folks started, let's start by first listing some of the various wireless standards you actually get. The first one you get is something called 802.11. A, you see what I mean by the letter. So there's always going to be a letter of some kind behind the dot 11. The second one is something called 802.11B. The third will be 802.11G. All of them are going to end with dot 11, obviously. The fourth is 802.11N. And the fifth on my list is 802.11AC. And then lastly, folks, the sixth one, the last one is 802.11ax. So this is the last one, but it's also the most recent one. So looking at this list in front of us, um, the very first ones I mentioned to you guys is the very oldest ones, the very first ones. And if you go down the list, they become newer and newer, more recent, and obviously faster and faster, or at least in most cases. You'll see what I mean once we start. Now, like I said earlier, wireless standards usually start with the numbers 802.11 and then obviously something. You can probably see now that these standards listed here are all starting with those numbers, which is of course the 802.11. All right, folks, so just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already, remember to hit that like button to help me get this video in front of more people that actually need it. And then, of course, also don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to follow this course or any of my other courses. Okay, then. So let's have a peek at that first standard on the list being the 802.11a. This is actually one of the oldest wireless standards, which was originally released in 1999, believe it or not. This 802.11a standard operates in the 5 gigahertz range and has a speed of 54 megabits per second. You'll still find this standard being used even today, but it's not commonly used anymore. So it's out there, but good luck finding it. Next up, we've got the 802.11b standard. This is also one of the oldest and one of the first IEEE standards that came out. It was also released in 1999, like the 802.11a, which we mentioned earlier previously. Unlike the 802.11a, which operates at a frequency of 5 GHz, this 802.11b standard operates at the 2.4 GHz frequency range. It has a much lower speed of only 11 megabits per second, and it also sadly tends to conflict with a lot more commonly things out there. So there's a lot of things out there that sadly run at the same frequency as this standard, and that's not always such a good thing. It's going to cause a lot of conflict. It's not uncommon to have things conflict that run on the same frequency range, but unfortunately the 2.4 GHz range is one of the most common frequencies, which now means you're going to experience a great deal of possible conflict. Just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, other random devices that also operate at the 2.4 GHz range are things like cordless phones. I'm not talking about cell phones or mobile devices, folks. I'm talking about those phones that have a charging base. You'll normally go and pick them up to make a phone call or receive a phone call. They've got like a line plugged into the charging base. Kind of looks like a, an old walkie-talkie if you think about it, or one of the old very first cell phones. Yeah, one of those. Those cordless phones 
run at 2.4 gigahertz. Other things that also run at 2.4 gigahertz are random things like a microwave oven. Yes, I'm not kidding folks. Now with microwave ovens, you'll notice it's usually only a problem if you actually turn the microwave on. If it's just plugged into the wall socket or the wall plug, and let's say the LCD display is displaying something or whatever, that doesn't normally do anything. It's only once you actually turn it on to, let's say, for example, heat something up. That is when that bad boy runs at 2.4 gigahertz, and that becomes a bit of a problem. You'll also find that Bluetooth things like wireless Bluetooth headsets operate at 2.4 gigahertz. Also, baby monitors, just to name a few. All of these things I just mentioned are things that will be a problem if they were too close to your router or too close to your access point, which is operating at this 2.4 gigahertz. They would basically cancel each other out, if I have to put it in simple terms. Please be aware, folks, there are definitely questions in the exam about this, about what I just mentioned. These questions are sometimes a little odd, but if you understand how these standards and frequencies operate, the questions themselves will make sense to you, and they won't actually seem that weird to you anymore. For example, they sometimes like to ask something weird in the exam along the lines of uh, a user, let's say a user has a company or there's a user at a company, he or she complains the Wi-Fi at the office keeps going down during lunchtime. What could be a possible reason for this? And then in the exam, you'll normally be presented with four possible answers, of which you can only choose one, because it's mostly going to be multiple choice questions in the exam. And you'll notice one of those four answers is going to be something along the lines of microwave oven, because it runs at 2.4 gigahertz. And guess what folks like to do during lunchtime? They like to heat up their lunch, folks. That's what they like to do. So, yeah, if you understand that these things run at 2.4 gigahertz, and you understand that that's something people will do during lunchtime, then you'll understand the question that's being asked here. So it's a bit of an odd question, I know, but I kid you not, that's an actual question in the exam. Doesn't mean you'll get it. I mean, the pool of amount of questions that's in the exam, there's many, many, many of them. But as long as you understand what is being asked of you, it doesn't matter how they ask it, it doesn't matter what they ask you, you'll get the questions right. And that's the goal here of this course. Anyway, folks, moving on to the third one on our list, which is 802.11g. This is basically a newer version of the previous 802.11b we just discussed. It's a, it's an upgrade, if you will. This standard was released in 2003, unlike the previous two, which were released in 1999. The 802.11g standard operates at the 2.5. 4 gigahertz range, which is the same range as the 802.11b we literally just mentioned previously. So this also means that it's going to tend to conflict with quite a lot of things out there from time to time. Unlike the previous 802.11b standard, this newer 802.11g standard runs at a speed of 54 megabits per second, which basically matches that of the 802.11a um, standard which we mentioned earlier. That was the very first one on our list. Next we have the 802.11n standard. This is basically an update to the 802.11a, the 802.11b, and of course the 802.11g standard. It was released many years after previous three, coming in at the year 2009. This bad boy operates at a frequency range at 2.4 gigahertz, but also at 5 gigahertz. So what I'm saying here is it's able to operate at both the 2.4 gigahertz as well as the 5 gigahertz frequency range. You can go and choose which one you want to go and use. Um, as, long as, as long as you keep in mind that there is a difference in speed sometimes, 2.4 gigahertz can't always go nearly as fast as 5 gigahertz. 5 gigahertz, because of the frequencies at which it runs and all that, you're able to get much, much faster speeds all out of that. Which brings us to our next bullet point here. The speeds can be up to 600 megabits per second. But whether you'll actually get that 600 megabits per second is going to depend on quite a lot of things. Uh, I mean, just to name one, that depends on the various factors like the amount of antennas you've got plugged in. Each antenna will be able to give you 
another 150 megabits per second. So the more antennas you've got, the more speed you get, basically. It's also going to depend on whether you're running at 2.4 gigahertz or if you're running on 5 gigahertz. So if you want that 600 megabits per second, you're going to have to get yourself on to the 5 gigahertz frequency range. And you're going to have to get yourself up to four antennas. Yes, folks. Speaking of antennas, this frequency can make use of something called MIMO. So that is multiple input, multiple output. So when you have yourself uh, an access point or a router, and this thing has multiple antennas, especially if it's got up to four, you can have yourself multiple input and multiple output streams being the MIMO. So you can go and connect multiple phones, multiple tablets, multiple laptops, multiple whatever it is, basically wireless. And using these MIMO streams, you can go and choose what the stream speeds are. So if I want to go and connect a phone, a phone, for example, doesn't use that much data. You can give it one stream. If it's something more resource hungry, like a laptop or what have you, you can go and connect two, three or four streams and you can give it more bandwidth if that's what we want to go and call it. So depending on the device, depending on the needs of that device, you can give it more streams, you can give it more bandwidth. So in a nutshell, what we're saying here is you've got some sort of control now as to how much bandwidth and how much speed certain devices have when they connect to your wireless device now. Pretty neat, right? All right, folks, then we have the fifth one on that list of ours, which is the 802.11ac. So this 802.11ac standard is also known as Wi-Fi 5 for the folks that didn't know that already. It was released in 2014, which is about roughly five years after the previous 802.11n standard we just spoke of. Every couple of years, the IEEE releases a new standard. So we'll probably be seeing some new standards being released again in the near foreseeable future, maybe in about a year or two from now. The 802.11ac has massive speed increases over the 802.11n standard, coming at speeds of up to 7 gigabits per second. Really fast if you compare it to the first standards we literally just discussed in this list of ours. This 802.11ac standard operates on the 5 gigahertz frequency range. There is simply way too much interference and way too much noise in the other uh, frequencies. So if we talk about like the 2.4 frequency range, yeah, there's just way too much noise. There's way too much going on there. There's way too many devices that's on that frequency at this point in time. So it's not uncommon and it's not at all surprising to see the newer frequencies trying to move away from the 2.4 gigahertz range just because there's so much interference. Okay, and then folks, the last wireless standard we had on our list, the 802.11ax. So this standard is the latest one out of all of the ones we've mentioned in this lesson. It was released as recently as 2021, which means it was released during the pandemic. That's obviously very recently, folks. This standard is also known as Wi-Fi 6. The previous one, which was the 802.11ac, it's obviously also known as Wi-Fi 5, which we've already mentioned to you guys. And then the one before that, which was the 802.11n. I forgot to mention to you guys that that's actually also known as Wi-Fi 4. So the fourth one was the, was the, the N frequency, that's Wi-Fi 4. The fifth one is the AC frequency, that's Wi-Fi 5. And the sixth one, which was the 802.11ax, or let's just call it the AX frequency, that is known as Wi-Fi 6. I kid you not. So yeah, since this Wi-Fi standard is called Wi-Fi 6 and the previous one was called Wi-Fi 5, it should come as no surprise to you that this standard is the successor to the previous one. So the 802.11ax standard runs at both the 2.4 GHz and the 5 GHz frequency range. And as for its speed, let's just say it's anywhere from 4 to 10 times faster than the previous, which is insane. What your actual speed is you get though will obviously depend on a number of variables which we'll discuss in a different lesson but it basically comes down to things like the amount of channels you use and the amount of memos that kinds of stuff so but yeah you can get out the speeds to about 9.6 gigabits per second 10 gigabits per second if not more it's going to depend on the channels the memos and a whole bunch of variables 
All right, folks, let's do a quick summary of all the wireless standards we mentioned in this video. Here, I have a table for you, which more or less sums up most of the important parts you need to know, at least when it comes to writing the exam, that is. I wouldn't say it's everything you need to know for going into the field, but from an exam perspective, this is good enough. This is all you need to know. There's actually way, way more that can be said about these wireless standards, but that will be covered in a different lesson. Otherwise, this lesson is obviously going to become too long and we're going to probably end up mentioning a few things that might not even be relevant to this course. So everything that I'm going to be mentioning in an upcoming lessons is relevant to the course and anything that doesn't need to be mentioned, I will not mention. You know, So if it's something extra, I will mention, hey guys, this is something extra, so at least you guys will know. Now, since we're more or less done with this lesson, just a bit of an extra for you folks. If you look at the standards on our table here, the second one from the top there that ends with B, let's just call it the B frequency, that's generally used for things like Bluetooth in most cases these days. So if you're using Bluetooth, you know, yeah, just remember you're actually using the B frequency. It runs at 2.4 gigahertz. The third one on our list there from the top, the one ending with the G, let's just call it the G frequency, that's easily one of the most common wireless standards you'll encounter today at the present moment. So if you go to someone's home, if you go to the office, that wireless Wi-Fi connection you guys normally connect to, guess what? If you go and check it out, it's normally going to be the G standard. There are cases where it's something else, like the A standard. Yes, believe me or not, it could actually be the A standard in some cases, but it's usually going to be the G standard. We sometimes, in some rare cases, use the A standard, like I just said, but if you find it being the A standard, it's normally because the G standard is interfering or there's some sort of interference with that standard. So there's other things running at 2.4 gigahertz in that office environment or that home environment. And that's causing a bit of a conflict. So the people that configuring that router or that access point didn't really have a choice and they went and switched to the A frequency. So if you see people using the A frequency, it might just be because it could be there's a conflict of some kind. If you look at the fourth standard there on our list, that's generally what a lot of companies have been using to connect their offices and their branches to one another wirelessly over the distances. Usually it's over great distances, but it's not limited to great. It could be a short distance. This is now obviously changing with the new AC and the new AX standards being released. So it's becoming more and more common to see companies use the AC and the AX standards instead of the N standard when it comes to connecting buildings and branches and stuff wirelessly over great distances and of course over great speeds. So basically the N standard is usually used to connect things over great distances but also over pretty decent speeds. The downside to this bad boy is it needs line of sight. Real deal breaker actually. So the top three wireless standards on our list there, top three, those are obviously the oldest ones, but those bad boys don't actually need line of sight. If you just get near enough of them, you know, if you are within range, well, there you go. But if you look at the bottom three there, those are faster over greater distances, but they need line of sight. Really sucks, doesn't it? Anyway, folks, I hope you've learned something in this lesson. If you have, do me a solid and give the video a like. And if you'd like, if you'd like to follow the course, or any of my other courses, quite frankly, remember to subscribe, otherwise you might miss it. Lastly, folks, before we call it, just a shout out to the channel sponsors. So, yeah, special thank you to the Patreons, special thank you to the PayPal sponsors, and also a special thank you to those guys that actually clicked on the thanks button below the video. That's actually also a way of sponsoring the channel, and it really does help me a lot. So, thank you very much, guys. It doesn't go unnoticed. All right, folks, talk to you in lesson 18 of the CompTIA Network Plus course.